What's up, Mets fans? It's your boy CP, and welcome back to another episode of the True Mets Talk Day After Recap. The New York Mets, just like Francisco Lindor in this graphic beside me, flexed their muscles in this Subway series and have swept the New York Yankees entering this off day here on June 27th. The boys are rolling. We'll talk about it, and we'll also preview this upcoming series against another red-hot team, the Houston Astros. Let's get into it. You are now watching the True Mets Talk podcast, talking New York Mets baseball 24-7, 365, with your host, CP. All right, before we get into any content, as always, make sure you hit that thumbs up on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new and are looking for more Mets content during this Mets hot stretch. And for the rest of the 2024 season, we will be on here providing pre-recorded episodes just like this one, streams for the pre-game and post-game, and much, much, much more. So hit that subscribe. And also, hit the comment section down below. How are we feeling, Mets fans? How are we feeling after sweeping the Yankees with authority? Because I feel damn good. And so should everybody else, regardless of how you felt about this team just two and a half, three weeks ago before this hot stretch. Regardless if you were positive or negative about this team and what they were displaying before. We all as a collective fan base should feel good about this product right now because they've been playing up and down the board, tremendous baseball. And like a lot of people have been mentioning and have been asking for, they got to 500 and they got back to 500, I should say. 39-39 after these two games against the Yankees, an offensive barrage in both games against two pretty decent MLB level pitchers, Garrett Cole and Luis Heal. This lineup did not care and simply continues to not care about who the opposition throws their way. We've seen it over the last couple of weeks. The Mets have been getting to great pitching and have been knocking out great pitchers early in the ballgame. Dylan Cease against the Padres in that sweep. Shota Imanaga in game one in that series win. And now Garrett Cole and Luis Heal in this Subway Series sweep over the last two nights. This is tremendous baseball, and all you can do if you're a Mets fan right now is go up and down the board and give props where props are due. And that's why they're making this very easy for me, and this isn't going to be a long podcast episode at all. There's nothing for me to overanalyze here. We went live on the post game last night. Make sure you check that out if you missed it and hit the thumbs up on that. That link is going to be in the description down below as soon as you're done watching this. <laughs> All I can do is just laugh. What a turnaround this has been for this ball club. And I'm going to go up and down the line here. Francisco Lindor, you're up first. What a treasure this, has, this guy has been in the leadoff spot, especially in first innings. It just seems like it's continuous leadoff double after leadoff double in the first inning, which sets the tone for the rest of this lineup. Mark Vientos, three hits in the Subway Series, four collective RBIs, multiple home runs. And he's just hitting the crap out of the ball. Francisco Alvarez deserves all the props in the world. And I really wanted to make him the center point of attention in this episode. Because he has done something absolutely historic. That I was scrolling through my Twitter and I saw, I forgot which stats account posted this fact about Francisco Alvarez. And I apologize, I will give credit in the description down below once I go back and remember the name of the account. But Francisco Alvarez... I believe is top three youngest catchers in the game, history of the game, to reach 30 home runs in his career as young as he is. Only beating him out 
is Pudge Rodriguez and Johnny Bench. That is some elite company to be in if you're Francisco Alvarez. And he had himself a hell of a Subway Series here as well. You see at the bottom of your screen, four hits, two extra base hits, one being a double, the other one being a home run. Three walks. The approach at the plate, he's not chasing. We've seen him chase before, especially when he got off the IL and struggled a little bit out of the gate. Falling a little over the plate. He has maintained his balance and he has taken his walks when they are given to him. And three RBIs as well. Had a hell of a ball game in game two. Is commanding this pitching staff behind the plate. There's nothing more that you could want out of your franchise catcher, especially a 22-year-old catcher, than what Francisco Alvarez is giving the New York Mets right now. Tyrone Taylor as a replacement, right? Keep on going down the list here. Tyrone Taylor replacing Starling Marte after going on the IL, producing in this Subway Series. Harrison Bader, who I have in the past, especially in the beginning of the season, was very curious on. And I was not on board with Harrison Bader, and I'm going to sit here and tell you all that I was wrong. I'm going to pull the receipts out on myself because, listen, Harrison Bader is providing more than what I was even asking in a quote-unquote good season that I was projecting Harrison Bader to have with the bat. The defense, we all know what we get with the defense. We're not here to talk about his defense. That's always going to be the focal point of his game. But what can he provide you with the bat? On pace for 15 home runs this season. He's got six right now. Got 30 RBIs. He's getting on base at the bottom of the lineup. He's driving baseballs. And he's hitting 275. If that's the production you're getting from your nine hitter, this lineup is a scary sight. And it has been a scary sight. Absolutely, 100%. This lineup is working, whoever is out there on the mound. I'm very proud of this team, if you can't tell. Very proud. This is more or less of me getting on this podcast and giving everybody their deserved props and flowers. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. The starting pitchers. Yes, we can talk about David Peterson only going four and one-thirds inning. We can talk about Sean Mania only going five. Obviously, the rain delay kind of hindered that. But you know what I mean. All I ask, and I will continue to say this, I've said it maybe a hundred times, whether it's on our streams or whether it's on this podcast, just be competitive and keep your team in the ballgame, which is what this starting pitching staff has been doing. So hats off to them. And the bullpen, in the wake of Edwin Diaz's suspension, who's going to step up? Obviously, Reed Garrett stepped up in game one, was put in a very tough situation, made a questionable pitch to Aaron Judge, but you know what? He recuperated and got the save. It's all that matters. It's next man up mentality. The bullpen is taxed 100%. I don't care if you say it is or it isn't. It is taxed. Drew Smith is now on the IL. We talked about that last night. About how weird of a situation it was for the Mets to wait to undergo imaging and be out of basically two roster spots heading into that game two versus the Yankees, which didn't matter in hindsight, but it's the process of how you get there that sort of made me question it. But who steps up? These two guys at the bottom of your screen step up. Bulk innings in games one and two of this series. First up is Daniel Nunez, who deserves to be the setup guy when Edwin Diaz gets back. There's no ifs, ands, or buts surrounding Daniel Nunez. He has the stuff, he has the confidence, and he has the results to make the case for him to be the permanent setup guy. Unfortunately, right now, he has to go more than one inning in relief consistently because of how taxed this bullpen is. But I would like for this bullpen to stabilize a little bit, especially when Diaz gets back, enough to the point where we can move Daniel Nunez to a permanent setup role. 
It's not Adam Adovino in that role. It's not going to be Drew Smith whenever he comes back from the elbow inflammation. It's not Reed Garrett anymore. It has to be Daniel Nunez. And Adrian Hauser. So many conversations surrounding Adrian Hauser to start off the season when he was a starting pitcher in this rotation. Moving to the bullpen, he has been lights out. And he is another guy that has taken on a Trevor Williams type role. We're a throwback to that name. The Mets have been looking for that long reliever. And this is exactly what Adrian Hauser has provided. Whether it's two and two thirds innings pitched, whether it's three innings pitched like last night. He can even go out there and give you four if you need. He's been lights out. And I want to give a shout out to Adrian Hauser. Obviously, that's David Stern's guy. They were going to test this bullpen thing out before they DFA'd him. And now you were talking about potentially DFAing him or finding a different situation for him in the beginning of the season. And he's on an expiring deal. He's a free agent after this season. We knew this when that trade happened with Tyrone Taylor and Adrian Hauser coming over as the package. But now you're having conversations with these guys on expiring deals to maybe see a situation where they get brought back if they continue these performances. Adrian Hauser has to be one of those guys. You let Trevor Williams go because he wanted to be a starter elsewhere. If Adrian Hauser keeps producing like this and buys into this long reliever type role, I can see an extension happening. But that's not only limited to Adrian Hauser. You're going to have those conversations surrounding Seve and Harrison Bader as well. Just two guys off the top of my head, or three guys, I should say, that are extension candidates. Now, it's not a surefire thing to happen. We don't know what David Stern's situation and plan is for the rotation, the bullpen, and the outfield. But you have to wonder what's going on in his mind when he sees these type of performances. So listen, a lot of outside noise from this Subway series as expected on both sides, Mets fans, Yankees fans. It's always going to be that way. And it's damn good to come on here and talk about a sweep for our New York Mets than vice versa. A little bit of bragging rights. But at the end of the day, I want Mets fans to know, especially if you're watching this, if you're a part of this channel, that this was strictly business for the New York Mets. This was just another team coming into their home ballpark, which we have talked about time and time again, where they struggle at home. And it was strictly business. Take care of business. The New York Yankees don't mean anything more than a two-game set to the New York Mets. Yes, to fans, it may be different, but these players, for sure, this is just business as usual, another team coming in. This isn't the Braves. This isn't the Phillies. This isn't any other NL team that the Mets are competing with for a playoff spot. It's the New York Yankees, who happen to share a city with them, but are in the AL. That's it. And if you disagree with that, if it means something more to you because you got Yankees fans and your family that have been rubbing it in for decades, I understand 100%. I'm talking about the player's perspective, not the fans. But it feels damn good. Let's ride this wave, Mets fans. Let's ride this wave. I am riding this wave. And I'm just seeing where this team takes me. Again, disclaimer, I said it last night. I'm not talking trade deadline. I'm not talking trade candidates. Whether the Mets are going to sell off some pieces or they're going to buy some pieces, I'm not talking about that until July 4th. After July 4th, when we get there, that's when I'll start producing some names for who the Mets can target for maybe some weaker areas of this team. And the bullpen is going to be a conversation for sure. So let's talk about who the Mets have coming to town next before we get on up out of here. Fresh series is upcoming. It's a weekend series, a three-game set versus probably, besides the Mets, one of the hottest teams in baseball. You see here down below, 8-2 and two in their last 10, coming off of two series sweeps. One of those sweeps being against the Baltimore Orioles, and we know how good they are. And they're coming into Queens riding a seven-game winning streak. The Houston Astros. 
Game one at 7, 10 p.m. That is on Apple TV Plus as a disclaimer. So make sure you mark that on your calendars, however you want to watch that game. You got a little matinee, afternoon baseball, 4, 10 p.m. in game two. And you got a 140 start time on Sunday in game three. The New York Mets have Jose Quintana in game one. They'll have Tyler McGill coming up on Saturday. And I mentioned this. I, I said I was going to talk about it here. Tyler McGill is an option to move to the bullpen after this start for the rest of Edwin Diaz's suspension. But he also has an option left available for the Mets to utilize if they want to bring up another arm, whoever that may be. Wilkin Ramos, Jose Buto, Christian Scott, anybody else in between. Or, like I said, the Mets can just move him outright to the bullpen. But after this turn in the rotation for Tyler McGill, I do think the Mets have the leverage. And I think Tyler McGill is where you start in terms of getting another pen arm in this on this team. Quite simple. And in game three, you have the ace right now, Kodai Senga out. There's been some positive progressions about Kodai Senga. I believe throwing live batting practice, he's been in the dugout, hyping up the guys. Good to see him a part of this team still, even when he's rehabbing. You got Sevi on the mound in game three. Listen, this is a very tough task. The Houston Astros have given the Mets fits over the last couple of years when they played each other. This team is perpetually good, and they got off to a slow start but they're gaining ground and they are basically the Mets of the AL slow starts wondering if they're a good team or it's just not their year. And all of a sudden, boom, even 500 baseball, the Astros are sitting at 40 and 40 and the Mets are 39 and 39 heading into this series. I'm excited. I really am. This is going to be a very tough test for the New York Mets. A very tough test. So. I don't know who the Astros have going. I should have probably did some research on that. I know they have an undecided slot in game three. I believe Framber Valdez is in game two, but I don't know who they have pitching in game one. We'll probably talk about this matchup on the pregame on Friday night with myself and Rob. So make sure you're tuning into that. But listen, like I said, there's no brainiac analysis needed in this episode. That's not what I came in here to do with this episode. Give props or props are due. Ride the wave of this Mets team. Ride the grimace wave because that has stuck to this team. And it's been a nice, it's been a nice little fun touch along with the winning baseball. And just keep producing. Good at bats. We've seen it time and time again when the Mets jump on pitchers early in the counts. Good results follow. And from the pitching perspective, when you get up 0-2-1-2, make the pitches count and make them competitive. Nothing more, nothing less. Like I said, I appreciate you all being here. Follow me on all my social media handles. Same handle as my YouTube at CPNY Sports. Hit that thumbs up if you like what you hear. If you like the channel, if you like the content, more streams, more Mets talk. Hit that subscribe button. Tell your friends, tell your family. We're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers on this channel. And we got a little work left to do in that category. Until next time, we'll see you all tomorrow for the pregame and perhaps a postgame. Turn on those notifications to get notified when we drop new content. I appreciate it. Let's go Mets. And let's go beat those Houston Astros. Peace. Thank you for watching the True Mets Talk podcast. Make sure you're tapping on that notifications button and checking out all the latest content on the channel. Thank you.